Hi, I'm Nick Raboy, and in this tutorial, we're going to explore buttons inside of Unity. So what I mean by this is we're going to see how to add overlay or menu type buttons to your Unity game, and we're going to be looking at a variety of approaches to get this job done. So up on my screen, you'll notice that I do have Unity up and running. I am on Windows, but this will apply for whatever operating system you're trying to run on. Um, this is just a, an empty 2D project. You'll notice that I just have the default sample scene and I have main camera. Now we're gonna be exploring two main ways to do this. We're gonna be looking at sprite-based buttons, and then we're gonna be looking at UI-based buttons. So we're gonna start off with the sprite-based approach. So what we wanna do is we want to go to game object in the menu, and we want to select 2D object, we want to select sprites, and then we want to select square. Now, it doesn't really matter what kind of sprite you use. You can use your own image-based sprite. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But for this example, so that way we don't have to import any external media assets, we're just going to use a square-based sprite. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this Sprite Button. Now, up on the screen, you'll notice that I do have this very simple button. I'm just going to make it slightly larger. And we're going to create a script for it within our assets directory. Now, typically, you might want to do this inside of a, a scripts directory but I'm going to do it right at the root of our assets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create, and then I'm going to say create C sharp script. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one Sprite button. Now with the Sprite button script created, go ahead and open it up in the editor of your choosing. So I've gone ahead and I've opened it up in Visual Studio Code. Like I said, it doesn't really matter what you open it in. Uh, it's just, we're going to be adding some code to it. All right, so to be successful with this, we don't need a start method or an update method. So let's go ahead and remove that. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean it up. I like brackets on the same line there uh, because of other programming languages. But what I'm gonna say is I'm going to say void and I'm gonna say on mouse down. So this button's gonna be triggered by a mouse down event. You could have your buttons triggered on other things as well, uh, but we're gonna keep it simple for this particular example. Now for this on mouse down event, all we're gonna do is we're gonna print a message to the log. So I'm gonna say debug.log and I'm gonna say button pressed. And I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna go back into Unity and I'm gonna take that sprite button and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it onto the actual game object. So I'm gonna click on the sprite button game object. I'm gonna drag my script over. You could easily say add component and then script. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna run it. Now, when I click on it, you'll notice that nothing is happening. And there's a reason why nothing's happening. It's because we're using a sprite-based button. We actually need some kind of collision boundary. So that way, Unity and the magic that it does can figure out, well, are we actually clicking on this sprite? So let's go ahead and stop the editor. And we're going to click on the sprite button game object. And we're going to add a component. What we're going to do is we're going to add a box collider 2D. And then we're going to save our project. I'm going to say run again. I'm going to click on this button. And if you notice, I'll go into my console uh, logs and it says button pressed exactly as we expect. Now you can go ahead and use these sprite based buttons to your heart's desire. It doesn't really matter if this solution makes sense for you. I'd say go for it. But now we're going to explore another way to do buttons in Unity and how to add scripts to those buttons as well. So this approach, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some UI based buttons. So these are more overlay type buttons that you would see in say a HUD or a, or a main menu or any kind of, in whatever you can think of when it comes to your game. It's hard to explain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my menu and I'm gonna say game object. I'm gonna navigate down to UI. And what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say button. Now your menu might look slightly different than mine depending on what version of Unity that you're using, but button is actually legacy as of today. So the one that you wanna use is Text Mesh Pro. However, the way that we're gonna interact with that button, it's gonna be the same. And to be honest with you, I actually still use button. So it doesn't really truly matter. We're gonna see both approaches just to kind of tie up any loose ends here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say button. And I'm gonna call it legacy button. And you'll notice that it created a canvas and it created an event system. That's normal because this is the canvas overlay. Uh, you'll also notice that it looks kind of funny on my screen. What we're gonna do to clean this up is we're gonna say, uh, click on canvas. 
And I'm going to change this to screen space camera rather than screen space overlay. And I'm going to drag my main camera into that render camera area. And now you can see that the button is probably a good size. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to drag just the button to the center of the screen. If you want to do it spot on, you can just go to position X and position Y and say zero, zero. Now it is being hidden behind our sprite button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on sprite button and I'm going to disable it from the inspector. So that way, all we see is the actual button from this uh, canvas or this legacy button. Um, and if I were to zoom in or if I were to run it, I can go ahead and click run. And if I were to click it, nothing happens because we haven't set up any kind of script. We do have text. We can easily change that text, no problem. But we're not going to worry about that for this particular tutorial. We're just going to add a script to it. So let's go ahead and stop running. We're going to go back into our project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another C -sharp script. For this script, I'm actually going to call it legacy button. And I'm going to open it up in my editor once more. Now, once again, for this particular button, we don't need a start and update method. So I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to bring that bracket up to the top line. And before we actually start coding inside of our class, we're going to do an import here. So we're going to say using, we're going to say unity engine.ui. And within this particular class, we're going to make use of the awake method. That's part of the unity lifecycle event. So we're going to say void awake. And we're also going to declare a private variable, which is going to represent the button that this particular script is attached to. So let's go ahead and say private button underscore button. And within the awake method, let's go ahead and obtain access or a handle to this particular button that it's attached to. So we're going to say button equals, we're going to say get component. This is going to be of type button. And then what we want to do next is we want to add an event listener to this button for when it is actually clicked. And that's going to point to an actual function that we're going to define. So let's go ahead and say button dot on click dot add listener. Let's go ahead and decide what we want to name that function. I'm just going to call it button click. And let's go ahead and define that button click function. So I'm going to say void button click. And inside of this function, I'm going to say the same thing. So I'm going to say debug dot log button pressed. And I'm going to hit save. So I'm going to go back into unity. And within unity, I'm going to go ahead and click on legacy button. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to drag the legacy button script into this particular button. And like, like I said previously, you can click on the add component as well, but I prefer drag and drop. It tends to work out better for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it and I'm going to hit run. Now, when I click on this button, if I go to the console, it says button pressed exactly as we expected. Now that was the legacy button. As I promised, we're also going to do the text mesh button. So that way we can get a feel for, well, is there anything truly different for that approach? So let's go ahead and stop running it. What I'm going to say is I'm going to go to game object and I'm going to scroll down to UI and I'm going to choose text mesh pro button. Now it's detecting that this is my first time ever using text mesh pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say import the TMP essentials. Now, after the essentials are imported, it's going to ask if you want to import the examples and the extras. You don't have to do that. You can be fine with the TMP essentials only. So I'm going to exit out of this little pop up window. Now, you'll notice that I do have a button. Uh, what I'm going to do, just like I did with the sprite button, is I'm going to hide or disable the legacy button. And I'm going to click on the regular button. I'm just going to leave the text alone. I'm going to leave how it's centered. It's, it's fine for this example. Um, what we want to do is we want to attach a script to it. Now, like I said, the, the code is going to be exactly the same for this button. We're just using a different text rendering system for the text on this button. We're using Text Mesh Pro, which is a more modern approach. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. But I'm going to go into the project and I'm going to click on button. I'm going to scroll down and I am going to drag legacy button onto this particular game object. So the same script that is used on the other button, the legacy button, I am now using on this new modern button. I'm going to save it and I'm going to run it. Now that it's running, I'm going to go ahead and click on that button 
and I'm going to go to my console log and I can see that button pressed does appear inside of the console log. So that was two different buttons, same script, it worked out. So right now we saw the sprite button and we saw the UI button. There's one more thing I wanna show you when it comes to the UI buttons. So you have a different approach to do scripting in this sense. So I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna click on the button, the button that we're using currently. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna be the same for both. I'm going to scroll down and you'll notice there is an on-click area where I can add stuff to this on-click function. So take note of that for just a moment. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the project and I'm gonna create a new script. I'm gonna say create new C-sharp script and I'm going to call this main controller. Now you can call it whatever you want. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach it to say a main controller game object, or in this case, I'm just going to attach it to the camera. So I'm gonna click on the camera and I'm going to drag main controller into the component area and I'm gonna save it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up the main controller script. Now within the main controller script, I am going to remove the start and the update. It's kind of irrelevant for this particular example. And I'm going to add a function. Now it's very important that this function is explicitly labeled as public. You cannot leave it as just void or whatever you wanna use it as. It has to be explicitly public. So I'm gonna say public void, and I'm gonna call it button click. And inside of this, as you can probably guess, we're just going to say debug.log button pressed. And I'm gonna save it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into Unity. I'm going to click on button and I'm going to scroll down to this on click area and I'm gonna click the little plus button. For runtime only, what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to choose editor and runtime so I can preview it inside of the Unity IDE. For the game object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the main camera over. Now, it depends on whatever your script is attached to. It doesn't really matter. You could also click the little button to navigate it for yourself. For the function, I'm gonna navigate down into main controller. And then because it is a public function, it exists in the list, and I'm gonna click button click. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save it. Now I did call it button pressed, uh, so I could probably rename it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my editor and instead of button pressed, I'm gonna say something along the line of on click pressed. Doesn't really matter. I just wanna show that it's different because if you'll notice inside of the Unity editor or the inspector, we still do have our legacy button script attached to this button. So we have two different functions attached. We have the legacy button one, and we have this on click. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say run. I'm going to click it. And you'll notice that it's showing on click pressed and button pressed because one is coming from the main camera, so the main controller, and the other is coming from the legacy button script. Now I could remove the legacy button script and it would just do on click pressed, uh, or I can remove that on-click area for the particular main component or main controller, and it would just say button pressed. So you have options when it comes to assigning functionality to these buttons. Now, how might you wanna choose based on these UI buttons? I tend to like to self-isolate my buttons. So when I add, say, for example, a close button within my game, I'll just go ahead and create a close button script that I attach to the button directly. So that way I can create prefabs out of it. It's not dependent on any other parent scripts or parent functions, but it's totally up to you. Your use case may qualify for something else. Um, and when it comes to sprite button versus a UI button, again, that's totally up to you and your particular use cases. Um, so once more, what we saw in this particular tutorial is we saw some options when it comes to creating buttons within your Unity game. Uh, if you enjoyed this particular tutorial, if you found value out of it, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that like button and then subscribed to the YouTube channel. It really does mean a lot to me and it'll help other viewers get an idea of, well, is this video going to be for them? Until next time, everyone have a great rest of your day.